Okay, guys and gals, uh, I'm back off the road for a couple of days, and by couple, I really do mean two. I uh, thought I'd do a little cigar and whiskey talk today, brought to you by Four Roses Single Barrel and a CAO Bones. Already poured my whiskey. Frankly, frankly, this is the second take on this video. Said a couple of things that might upset somebody on the last one. So, I remade it a little bit. Or I am remaking it a little bit. Uh, today's going to be one that you probably didn't expect. At least not at the beginning. Today's Cigar and Whiskey Talk is uh, congratulating... Came a little bit, the Democrats, and uh, the Democrats have long targeted certain blocks of voters, uh, folks that they want to make feel like they're oppressed or the world's out to get them, or uh, maybe folks that are way too entitled to stuff. Or think that they're way too entitled to stuff. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, I got to uh, spend a lot more time in the New York metro area than I wanted to. Uh, I was going out there about every other month for a few days and talking to a lot of people out there. And I found out when I was out there that the metro area folks honestly believe that the rest of the U.S. live like they do with constant regulations and constant instruction from the government and uh, basically constant control of their lives day to day, every hour of the day. All right? And uh, I found out by talking to those people that they honestly believe that the rest of the country lives like that. Now, folks that live in those areas... now. It's overpopulated. It's overcrowded. Uh, you've actually got to be willing to do something to get a job, and a lot of those folks aren't willing or think that they're not able to do it to do those things. Uh, for existence, or yeah, for existence, <laughs> idiot. Um, for example, uh, you say I can't get a job in my area, and I say. Move to, move to a different area. And they go, well, I can't move to a different area. I don't have a car. I don't have any money to move. I don't have this. Well, that's too bad. Make it happen. Folks in the Great Depression made it happen. You can too. Uh, but here we go. Back to the Democrats. Uh, those folks, the constantly victims, all right? They're not victims. They just want to portray themselves as victims. Uh, I probably shouldn't too, say too lazy to get a job. Sometimes it's more not willing to put in the effort to go get a job. You can take that for what it's worth. I don't know if it's any different or not. Um, the folks who honestly believe that they are entitled to someone else's money. Okay? The rest of the world should support me because I can't support myself or won't support myself. Uh, what they don't realize is uh, the government doesn't have any money of its own. You know, they go, oh, the government should part of such a part of me. The government doesn't have any money. They don't have any money. They've only got one source of money, and that's the taxpayers. Uh, so any money that you get from the government, you're not getting from the government. They're, it's being filtered through the government from me to you. Okay? So don't cry. All right? uh, those folks... Um, the folks that don't care if they cheat to win, you know, we know who they are, you know, that, those kind of folks. And you know, it's not really a surprise because the adult Democrats we see today are the kids from the Woodstock in the sixties and the seventies and so on and so forth, who started their movement. Because, ah, we shouldn't conform to anything because... Well, we don't want to. <laughs> That's good. No, no other reason than that. Uh, but they're adults now, and they're raising kids now, and they're raising their kids to be more little weenies. So those are the folks that are voting. 
uh, the folks that think they have a right to destroy someone else's property because they're mad. All right? Uh, you've heard me say it before. You have the right to destroy one person's property, and that's yours. No one else's. All right? Uh, and now, on top of the whole voter block that they normally get, uh, they have succeeded in mobilizing the too lazy to go to the polls. All right? Back when I first started voting, uh, you couldn't get an absentee ballot. Dogs are running out of their phone up there. You couldn't get an absentee ballot unless you were physically unable to get to the polls. And by physically unable, I mean physically unable. Uh, you were confined to your house. You were confined to a, ho to, a ho to a hospital. You were confined to a nursing home. Uh, or you were in the military overseas and could not vote. Or you were in the military station out of your home state and could not make it back to your home state to vote. Or you had one of those jobs that took you out, took you out, and there was no way possible you could be you could be at the polls on 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 uh, election day. Those were the folks who qualified for an absentee ballot. No one else. And you actually had to qualify for an absentee ballot. You didn't have just ask for one and magic and magically get it. All right, now it's one of those, you know, I'm kind of too lazy to go down and fulfill my civic ob obligation of, of voting. So what's going to happen is I'm going to request an absentee ballot so I can mail it back in and uh, might request a few from my buddies too. Might request, might, request a, might request an absentee ballot under every variation of my name that I can think, think of. Or if they accidentally send me more than one, Hell, I'll fill them both out and send them back in. You know, those folks. You know, so they're kind of the they're, they're kind of in two in, in two categories. They're the don't care if I have to cheat to win because I know more than you and I know what's best for you, and too lazy to go vote. So let's just end this up by saying congratulations to the Democrats. You finally figured out a way to mobilize the too lazy to go vote. Congratulations. All right, until next time, thanks for your views. Thanks for your support. Uh, I appreciate it. I appreciate you all watching. I've got some things in the works. Uh, this next class coming up is the last one of the year, so I'm going to have time to get back here in the shop and get back to making videos and so on and so forth. So uh, I've got some plans in the works. Uh, we'll see if they all come to fruition or not. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, the rest of the day, I've got to get to spend making beard products, making fixin' wax, and uh, making sun compasses and cutting boards. So, gonna be busy the rest of the day and all day tomorrow. And then I'll be back on the road on Wednesday, going back over to Ohio for the last class of the year. So, may see y'all out there on the road, and uh, talk to you later. See you in the woods. I hope.